an error in the King James Version? Not hardly. <laughs> Got a uh, letter in the mail here. Um, asked a very good question. And uh, I need to get back to answering these letters. I have a whole stack of them over there I need to do videos on. Just haven't had the chance to do it. But uh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A very tired little squirrel there. <laughs> so pretty neat card. And um, the sister that sent this, she said, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. Proverbs 14, verse 4. The ministry can be messy, but thank you for laboring. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff I have to put up with. I'll just say it that way um, in the ministry. Um, but she writes some things here, and then she says, Also, if you have a chance and the Lord has given you an answer, can you please explain why Psalm 34 verse 2 uses a feminine pronoun, her, when talking about David's soul? Okay. So let's look at that. Psalm 34, verse 2. Now the Bible talks about not leaning on your own understanding. And you can look at it and you can say, um, uh, you know, I, I mean, one of the things I thought, I thought, well, I want to make sure that I didn't somehow get a misprint here in my Cambridge King James Bible. And I went and I checked out another. No, it says the same thing. Huh, you know, oh, maybe in the 1611, I went and got my 1611, you know, photographic copy thing. That says it in there too. You know, and you start to try to lean on your own understanding. And the Lord just said, just do a keyword search. That's all. And that was where I got my answer. Psalm 34, verse 2 says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Okay, verse Psalm 34 at the top there, a psalm of David. When he changed his uh, behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. little heading there at the top of the thing. But my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Are souls feminine? Huh? You know, you kind of think. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. But I'll show you the answer. Isaiah 61, verse 10. This gives you the answer to it. And it's a real blessing. Isaiah 61, verse 10. Okay. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. My soul, in context there. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. So there's male. And as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Why would Isaiah compare himself both to a man and a female? Male and female? Well, because there's a typology there. A male bridegroom and a female bride? Hmm. Um, you mean to tell me that uh, God is giving a little bit of a prophetic utterance there through David back in Psalm 34, verse 2? That someday we are going to be part of the body of Christ, male, and yet the bride of Christ, female. What lives for eternity? The soul. There's some female there, you know, the bride of Christ. Get to be in heaven. I don't think I'm going to be a, a woman or something, Something, excuse me. But uh, I'm going to be called the bride of Christ. I'm part of the bride of Christ. You will be too if you're saved. Hmm. Pretty neat, interesting, deep meaning. So, again, uh, she wasn't saying that she's going to give up her King James Bible or anything far from it, but she's just saying, I don't understand. This is kind of odd, you know? And, you know, I looked at it, and I, I didn't say, <laughs> you know, foolish, you know, woman, she doesn't understand the Bible like I do. I looked at it, and I went, <laughs> huh? That doesn't make any sense. You know, my soul, you know, her, Huh? Weird. And like I said, I started to lean on my own understanding. And I started to think, well, maybe you know, I should, maybe I should check my Hebrew text over here and I should maybe see what the, you know, what, what does the Hebrew word mean? And the, well, the Hebrew word could be translated as her or, you know. And I start thinking that stuff. And the Lord just says, no, just do a keyword search. Just see what the Bible says. 
And I went from doubt to, you know, I mean, not really a whole lot of doubt because you know how I feel about the King James Bible, but, you know, a little bit of doubt, a little shred of doubt to all of a sudden, wow, that's a blessing. You know, and I have seen that thing so many times with this beloved King James Bible. I've just seen it over and over again where my doubts, my fears, my misunderstanding of this, the Lord shows me and says, here's the explanation. Isn't this neat? Isn't this deep? Wow, you know, that is amazing. Kind of like the King Jesus Version series that I did where you go through John chapter 6 and it's talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood and many of his disciples left him. They forsook him and went away because it was a hard saying, you know, they didn't understand what's going on here. And if you actually study it, it's a beautiful blessing about the scriptures themselves. The Catholics come along and say, oh, it's the Eucharist. <laughs> it's not the Eucharist. Okay, the bread is the Old Testament. The blood is the New Testament. Okay, that's what he's talking about, eating it. Right. If you haven't seen those studies, please watch them. They're very deep, very profound studies the Lord revealed to me. All glory goes to him for that. So um, there are no contradictions in this King James Bible, unless you don't rightly divide it. Then it contradicts itself quite a bit. Um, you have to study to show thyself approved unto God and be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, referring to 2 Timothy 2.15. You study this book, you rightly divide this book, there are no contradictions at all. all right? And when you find something that you can't understand, take some time and just say, okay, Lord, I don't understand this. Um, her soul, type it in. Type in key words like that. You don't want to just do soul because that would be a huge number of uh, references, but you just type in her soul. And you'll get a lot of, you know, Sarah, you know, her as her soul was in departing or whatever, and you think, okay, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't line up with this Psalm 34, verse 2. And you look at this one, and, you, you know, it takes some time to study that stuff. And you start to go through the Word. You start to search for those hidden treasures in there. And the Lord will show it to you. Uh, don't quit on God's book, ever. This book has been around for a long time. And uh, if God wanted to get rid of it, he would have gotten rid of it. Oh, there's better translations. Show me. There are none. All right. Uh, the American Standard Version is not even in print anymore. The one I have, I found at a used bookstore. It was a second edition. It wasn't even the first edition. Um, a lot of these new versions have gone out of print. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is not in them. They have an Antichrist spirit in them. This one here has God's Holy Spirit within the pages of it. It's a living book. And God will show you amazing things out of it if you trust Him. That's going to be it. Stand by the King James Bible, brethren. Don't ever quit.